Hey everyone, this is Moshfau. I'm a full stack developer from the Maldives, currently working with the web team at Lotifiles. Today we are going to talk about the Lotifiles plugin for Strapi. First, we will show you a demo of the plugin and uh, see how it works. We will take you uh, behind the scene and uh, have a look at how the plugin is actually developed at coding level. Uh, we'll share some learnings and uh, some resources that helped us in developing the plugin very easily. So first, let's go through the demo and see how it actually works. So what is the Lotifiles plugin? Basically, it's a plugin that allows users to add a custom field into their Strapi models. Using this custom field, you will be able to browse through thousands and thousands of free animations in the Lotifiles public animation library. Now, let's have a look at a demo of this and see how it actually works. So I have a Strapi application running locally. Let's open the admin panel and log in first. We'll go to the content type builder here. We will create a um, content type, which I already have done. Um, so I have a text field and a custom field here in this uh, collection type. So how you add a custom field is in the se uh, field selection dialog, go to the custom tab and select the Lottie field. You can only see this if you have the plugin installed and uh, enabled in the configuration. Once you have done this, you can go to the content manager. Here you can uh, create a new entry, uh, give it a title and um, click on the Lottie field here. You'll see the login screen. Even though the plugin is free, you need to have a uh, account with lottifies.com to uh, to be able to browse through the animation uh, library. Uh, this is uh, completely free. You can uh, click the get started button here if you don't have an account. And uh, with a few clicks, you can create a free account very quickly. Once you have an account created, let's come back to the uh, plugin window here and log in. Once you are logged in, uh, if you come to the uh, browser here, you will see the recent animations and uh, you can flip through multiple pages of these animations. We have thousands and thousands of animations in the library. Uh, you can also browse through the featured animation section here. Um, also, we have a, a popular section separately, which uh, is based on the user's uh, likes and uh, the popularity of the animations. You can also search through uh, the library using a keyword. For example, let's look for a loading animation. Uh, so once you find an uh, animation that you like, you can click on it, select and click finish here. Let's save it. Uh, and let's go back to the list view and uh, see it in the uh, list view as well. Currently, it's not showing because we haven't uh, added the uh, field into the list view. So if we select icon column here, you can see the animation is uh, shown in the list view as well. Now, let's see how you can consume this data. Let's go to GraphQL Playground here. You can uh, fetch the data using GraphQL endpoint or using the REST API provided. If you send a query to uh, fetch the articles here, you can see in the return data, we have the icon field, which is the custom field that we added. And the value is a stringified object representing the animation data. So in this one, what we are looking for is the Loti URL, which we can use in the consuming applications to render the animation. We also have some metadata along with this. Also, we uh, return with the created by uh, uh, field. So this is uh, this gives the uh, detail of the person who created the uh, animation. So we, we have the avatar URL and the name of the creator as well. Uh, the data will be in the same format if we uh, make a request through the REST API as well. So this is how you create a, um, a, a custom field in your Strapi model. Select the data through uh, the animation browser and uh, consume it through the APIs. So the next thing I want to show you is how we actually um, 
created the plugin. Okay, so let's look under the hood and see how the plugin is actually developed. So in this part, I'll talk about three things. One, how we add the custom field, how we register it, uh, how we build the uh, uh, browsing uh, model. Uh, it's the model that you see when you click on the uh, field, how we override the list view. So let's go into the code. Here, um, let me close the files first and start from the beginning. So in the source uh, plugins folder, you will see the plugin uh, folder structure created when, when you run the uh, CLI command to generate the plugin. So in this, uh, we will look for the, uh, the Strapi object. So we have the plugin name, description, the kind, which is plugin, and then the display name, uh, which we will see in once the uh, plugin is published. So before we begin, what we need to do is go to the configuration file folder here, look for the plugins file. If you don't have it, create one and enable the plugin by adding this piece of configuration. So uh, you have to point it to the right directory for it to work. Once this is done, we'll look for the server file here. Sorry, in the server folder, we'll look for the register file. Here we'll register the custom field. We'll give it a name, the plugin ID, and the type of the return data, which is string. We will do the same in the admin folder as well. We'll look for the index file here, and we will register the plugin here as well. So we have the name, plugin ID, type, and the label and description. The label and description uh, mentioned here is the um, a level and description that we see in the UI when we open the field selection dialog. Now the values are coming from the translation file here. So in the translation folder, we have the uh, JSON files for different languages. You can add the key value pairs for multiple languages here. Um, so once uh, the registration is done, also, um, I forgot to mention here we have the input field, which is the input uh, component that will be used as the input field. It's the component that we'll be working with when you click on the input field. So if we go into this field here, we are using the carousel input component, which is coming from the Strapi's design system. All the UI elements that we're using in the plugin UI will be coming from the um, uh, Strapi's design system. So in the carousel input, uh, what we do is when you click on the input field, we will open a Loti input dialog, which is wrapped with the Loti provider. The provider will take care of all the data fetching from our um, uh, Loti files APIs. Um, so in the input dialog, what we are doing is we uh, display the fetched uh, list of animations in a grid view here. Um, so once an animation is selected, uh, we will return that data back to the field through the handle select um, function. So in this uh, function, we will uh, do a callback to the on change listener, which will add the data uh, in the collection uh, itself. Um, so uh, other than that, uh, we have some um, files that were added, uh, things like uh, the queries that we used for fetching the data from our um, APIs. Also, we have the API, which is the GraphQL instance we are using to fetch the data. So here we have the um, query and mutation functions. Um, so other than that, um, we have the, so in the admin folder, we have uh, the extension. So in the extensions, we create a hook that we are going to use to override the uh, table view. So in the hook, we look for the field schema and check whether it's the custom field that is uh, that, that that we created. And if it's a custom field, we up, uh, override the cell formatter with an avatar component, which will help to display the animation instead of the text data. 
um, and this hook will be registered in the index file down here in the bootstrap function. So we are using the inject column in table hook uh, to um, override the uh, table view. So that's about it uh, on how we develop the plugin. Uh, next, we'll uh, look at some of the um, uh, resources that helped us in uh, developing the um, plugin. Developing the uh, plugin was quite easy because we had uh, the Strapi CLI to generate the folder structure that, that's needed um, for the plugin. We had the design system to create the UI components. And we also have uh, the uh, Strapi's official documentation that guide um, us in step-by-step -step how to uh, develop the plugin. And finally, publishing to NPM was quite easy. Now let's look at uh, some of these um, resources. Um, so if we come to the official documentation and go to um, plugins development here, so here we have the step-by-step uh, -step guide on how we can start with uh, the development, um, uh, what commands to run, uh, and uh, how to um, register the custom field if we go into the custom fields here. So uh, we, we have all the details of uh, what properties or what parameters that we need to pass into the registration function. Uh, if we go to the plugin extension here, it, it tells you um, how to actually um, uh, do the, uh, I mean, create the extension and create a hook and override the um, uh, list view as well. Um, so other than that, uh, the design system was uh, quite helpful. So here we are looking at the uh, storybook of the the Strapi's design system, and we have a, a rich uh, list of uh, components. So some of the components that we are using in the um, in the plugin uh, includes uh, things like uh, carousel input. So uh, this is this you uh, this this component you can actually see in the Strapi's uh, media library as well. Uh, also, we are using the buttons and uh, the nav links and everything. Uh, also, the model layout, as we can see here, this is the model layout we're using in the uh, data browser uh, in the plugin. So um, these are the resources that help me in developing the uh, plugin so easily. Um, if, if you have any uh, comments or any questions, please send it our way. If you have any uh, feedback for the plugin also, do share with us so that we can improve on that. Um, thank you so much for having me and uh, see you another time. Thanks for the opportunity and thanks to uh, Strapi team. Bye-bye.